and this music. In the meantime, I'll start this. Super Street Fighter 4 theme of Sukura. This comes from Z, or Z more than Z because it cut off his name. <laughs> So I'm not really familiar with the style. Like it sounds like this would be like a Euro house rave kind of vibe. I mean, but obviously when they threw in the strings, uh, you know, that it sounded like it could have been a violin, maybe. But that was a very unique choice. I loved what they did, but definitely when, you know, the establishing sounds, it's like, um, it's, it would be like a movie if the establishing scene was a construction site and all of a sudden it focuses on a feather. I mean, I would get that creatively, but when they put that little string uh, instrument in for the melody at that point, it kind of sucked me into a little vortex of like, oh, there's a cute little melody. Um, and it would have been kind of nice if we could have covered, followed that melody with a little bit more of an aggressive synth sound, but who am I to say what they want to do, right? I'm not that guy. Um, but that, you know, it definitely has that straightforward kind of house rave beat, you know, it's going, 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 going. Um, and the very unique synth sounds you know, very edgy uh, kind of vibe, but very melodic. And I and what I don't I know a little bit about the, that ravey house kind of vibe. Like it didn't surprise me when the piano came in with the turnaround that it did, because you hear that. You know, for what little experience that I have with that style of, my, of music, you hear that come in. But I really liked um, so far, thus far, just the whole energy and the fire of it. You know, is I don't know where this is the theme of Sakura. If this is a piece of music we're playing, whether you're, you know, you're upping your powers or doing something, or if this is actually uh, part of a cutscene, or if this is part of actionable play, but I love the energy of this. But I love, but it's got that '90s rave house vibe. <laughs> Oh, there's a cute little melody. I'm sorry, I just had to do that. That all those all those key changes just sounded like cut and paste key changes. It didn't bother me, but it's just like. Oh, I love the synth he's using here. 
Tim, what's Tim? What's Tim? What's Tim? What's Tim? What's Tim? What's Tim? What's going on back there? Oh, I love that. See, I love that. I've actually, you know what? I have sounds like that that I've built in um, in my library, you know, composing, you know, tracks for music libraries and stuff. Because sometimes some of the orders that I've gotten as a composer have been um, not necessarily pieces of music as, as it is standalone, standalone stems. So they just want literally one chord that's going to arpeggiate and then what i end up doing is throwing some very unique delays on it to give it at least some bounciness uh repeated bounciness and i love that as a dynamic and what it does into your head and this composer used one of those styles of of you know but it was very fat and sizzly you know it had a really gritty you know uh kind of vibe to it so i love that kind of stuff especially if you've got this going, and then you've got something going, you know, and it's ping ponging and bouncing off of each other. So, anyhow, uh, super duper Z, mahalo for that suggestion. Um, what time is it? Okay, I got I got time for one more, guys. So fire me one more here from the chat. Let's go. Let's do it. Dun 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 Hello, chat froze. Oh, there we go. Oh crap! Look at all that. Jeez, I just, somebody just bombed me with a giant list. Holy smokes! Well, at least it's my usual suspects. Everybody coming in. Got it all loaded up and ready to press. Pew. All right, let me see if I've got one here. All right, let me see. I have picked. Something that I have not heard. Nope, I heard that one. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. This is the last track for the evening. You guys said the third one down. Okay, here we go. This is Stand a Chance uh, from the Big O. And I guess the composer is the composer's name Toshihiko Sahashi. Is that the name of the composer? I mean, I know it's the topic, but I don't want to. I don't want to say it is and it's not. Let me know really quick while I start this. Let's do this. Stand a chance. All right. was really 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 slick what I you know um, I think I'm gonna get a shirt and it's just gonna say what I love about that because I always say that 
What I love about that was the fact that it's it's obviously you know synth drums and stuff like that and uh, you know the, that percussive thing. The the beginning of it was very like uh, somebody had mentioned Batman style in uh, kind of goth gothic city looking kind of superhero through the dark alleys with steam coming out of the side you know like uh, you know Big Trouble in Little China type of vibe yeah. Um, but actually, uh, one of the things I liked at the very beginning is like the first 32 bars of it was, you know, the, there was a bass sequence just in one note. You know, that was holding the grind along with the rest of the percussive arrangements. But that really stuck out to me. That, that was a very throaty little through line as these, you know, horn things kept went in and out. So that was really fun. It was going, but the last third of the track is what I really love the most because then the arrangement stepped out a little more and got more conniving and more mysterious and dark. And, and you know, there was the last third of that track created more theater of the mind for me, you know, as far as like what could be happening here in the scene or what it, what's the composer going for? Because then the melodies and the, the horn sections are the lines that were starting to creep off of it started to get a little more eclectic, you know, because what, what to me, the predictability of some of the chord changes that he had established or the composer had established early on, once again, I'm not saying predictability as if that's a bad thing. You just kind of have a feel that the change is going to come, whatever the key is going to be in, that in most cases, someone's going to make a change that's going to go from one to three to five, one, four, five, or something, whatever the case is. Um, but that last half of the um, arrangements, I was like, yeah! 